Hey, it's Ken from OK Portugal and welcome to Portugal Farm Life. We're reaching the end of April and uh, look how beautiful the farm is looking right now. We've been growing grass on our farm over winter and spring and it's soon going to be time to cut all this down and turn it into sheep food. And it's a real shame because look at the variety of plants and flowers, different types of grasses, different types of cereals. Everything's looking fantastic. These main fields over here are being saved so we can turn them into hay bales for the sheep. And the other fields on this side over here, they've been grazed by the sheep for a while. Now this is our neighbor Joaquin on his trusty Ford tractor and uh, he's actually preparing this field over here. He's got a tiller on the back and what he's doing is uh, he's basically breaking up the ground, breaking up all the root bundles and things like that from the grasses and clearing the area for the summertime. Turn <laughs> away! So let's get across to that field and have a closer look at all the action. Today is such a beautiful day. Look at that blue sky and that sort of orange dirt. Amazing. Oh. Tudor Bay, Joaquin. Tudor Bay. Tudor Bay. Somos umas máquinas. Si, si. <laughs> and this is Joaquin's trusty Ford tractor. Now, if you've been watching our videos for a while, you'll be very familiar with this. It's a Ford 3430 and uh, it's two wheel drive. Nice and powerful. And uh, yeah, Joaquin's going to show us how he tills all of the earth. Preparar terra para milho, para ovelha. Ah, okay. Preparar. So he's basically preparing the ground here and he's going to be planting corn. Excellent. And on the back here, this is this tiller. As you can see, it's got some little uh, teeth that go into the ground and basically break up all of the root bundles and stuff like that. Now viewers who've been watching our videos for a couple of years will know exactly what's going on here. Uh, basically in the springtime we grow grasses, those get turned into hay bales. And then in the summertime we grow corn. And uh, we don't actually grow the corn so we can eat the corn cobs. We grow the corn so we can get a nice green sort of corn stalk. And then during the hot dry summer months, um, his sheep can basically come into a field and they can graze on something and it's not just dry and dusty. Now as always I'm wearing completely the inappropriate attire on my feet here to be walking on rough ground. But I'm a South African man and we built different. <laughs> so we can see here it's made a nice soft sort of bed. It's actually still quite firm and hard in there so he's going to have to go over this a couple of times I think just to make sure that he has a nice soft bed to plant the corn in. So the main strip of the farm runs along in this direction here and that's all got the long grasses and stuff. This section over here is going to get planted up now with corn um, and it's going to wait a couple of weeks before all of this is cut. This is going to get cut, it's going to get bundled and then after that, we're going to repeat the same process as what's happening over here. And uh, yeah, the corn over here is going to grow, it's, well, it's going to grow longer and slower. And this corn is going to be ready first for the sheep to eat. Now it's not even summer, it's actually still spring. Uh, at the end of the week, it's going up to 30 degrees Celsius. And um, yeah, this summer is going to be scorchingly hot. This entire month, it was supposed to rain. This is usually what happens in central Portugal. So you have like the whole month of April, it just rains almost every single day. But we've just had these crazy blue skies and really, really hot weather and absolutely no rain. This ground should be all sort of soggy and muddy. And as you can see, it's incredibly dry. So it's a little bit worrying for the summer. Summertime's gonna hit like 40 degrees. There's gonna be absolutely no rain for months and months and months. And uh, this was a really important month for us to actually get some water into the ground, get some water into our wells, into our dams and things like that. So um, yeah, in a little bit, we're gonna be having a look at how we're gonna irrigate our farm. Um, I've got an idea and uh, yeah, hopefully it's gonna work. All the way down there, Joaquin's got his sheep. So let's go down there and have a look. It's pretty cool walking past the farmhouse and seeing it from this angle here. I don't normally see it from this angle, so it's quite, it's quite different for me to be standing here right now. And this is actually quite interesting. So this is where he's busy um, harrowing the ground. And over here is what it kind of looked like before he started. So this is what the sheep do basically when they're left on a piece of ground. They've eaten pretty much everything. They've left these little yellow flowers. I think they're called corn marigolds. I'm not entirely sure. And uh, yeah, there's not really anything left there for them. Joaquin, uh, quantos uh, ovelhos total? Uh, 159. 159. So, 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 uma... Cinco, um, cinco novo. Oh. Wow, 159. 159 sheep. Wow. Okay, cool. Uh, si, si. 
Continue. Okay. Justin, in that the strong door, the olival, oliver, olive. Yeah. O dia que engatar de estrouçador, ok. Oliver. Oh, ok, ok. Ah, ok, ok, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mas Joaquim diz. Sim, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, Telefono e then. Ten. Ok, arranjar. Ou diz ou tu fora. Obrigado, Joaquim. So, in the bottom of the field here, this is where Joaquim's got all of his sheep. I'm not sure if this is all of them, because he said 159. This doesn't look like. I mean, this is probably half of them. As you can see, they're just eating machines, just constantly munching away non stop. These are milk sheep. So they're not the big fat sheep that are bred for like meat and stuff like that. Now, one of the things I love doing as a South African is having a braai, which is basically a barbecue, and uh, having lamb chops. And the only way that you really get meat from these sheep, it's very seasonal. So if you go into shops here, you don't really find lamb chops all year round. Uh, it's very seasonal. It's usually only when they have the lambs. And uh, I believe that all of the male lambs, those are the ones that get slaughtered and basically turned into lamb chops for our braais. They don't really need the males because the males don't produce milk. I love the sound of these cow bells tinkling away in the field. So the milk from these sheep get turned into cheese. It's a very famous cheese. It's called Suelera cheese. And uh, there's different regions of Portugal and they all have their own different types of cheeses. There's like the Cerro de Estrela cheese. There's, um, I'm actually not sure of all the other names, but I know that ours is also up there on the list with really good cheeses. So all of the grass on our farm and also in the surrounding areas gets turned into milk and made into this awesome cheese. You can see that these sheep are a lot skinnier than like the French sheep or the ones that are bred for meat. Um, right now they don't look too skinny because they've still got their, their, um, their wool on, but pretty soon they're all going to be shaved just in time for the summertime so they don't overheat. Yeah? See, si, see. Si. Yes, yes. Mais... Maior uma, mais leite, duas ou três. Duas ou três. Número maior. uno. Maior. Yeah. Cinco estrelas. Sim. Sí. <laughs> sí. Joaquim is really proud of his farm. He's really proud of his sheep. He's really proud of the milk that he produces here. And uh, he was just saying that it's number one. It's, it's of the best. And it really is, if you look at all the care and attention that he puts in. As I was saying earlier, we um, have had absolutely no rain in April. Um, everything should be really soggy and damp. All of the water levels should be really high. But unfortunately, they're not. And it's really worrying. Have a look at this. So on this field, we have like, it's basically called a, um, a charka. And what they do is they just use a digger and they just kind of dig into the ground. And uh, there's the water table. And you can see how low it is. Now, normally, this time of year, it should be up to about here. And you can see how much it's dropped. This is somewhere where the sheep can come and they can just have a little drink. Um, it's actually quite a small one. We've got one on the main, you know, on our farm just over here where it's like a lot bigger, but it's pretty much the same thing as this. It's actually quite surprising to see it this low at this time of year, I can't believe it. And here you can see the white dried algae on the leaves, I'm sorry, on the branches of the tree. That's pretty much where the water level should be. So up to about here, going around. So for those of you that haven't really been watching our videos before, if you don't really understand the relationship that we have with Joaquin, when we bought this farm four years ago, um, Joaquin was actually looking after it. He was growing grass here um, so that he could feed his sheep. And um, after we bought the farm, uh, his son Sergio came, he can speak English, and negotiated with us and said, look, um, I really want to continue looking after the farm. It means that I can, you know, have more sheep. And uh, if you let me grow grass in the fields, I'll do all of the work in the field. So I will you know, till the ground as we can see here. I'll plant the corn, I'll plant the grasses, I'll cut them, I'll bale them, and you don't have to worry about any of that. So for me and Gina, you know, we didn't come here to, to raise sheep or anything like that. We actually just came here so that we could have a really peaceful life out in the countryside. And uh, you know, when you've got a large amount of land, it's pretty useful when someone else wants to do all of the works so that they can take all of the grass. Now there are people who have said, oh, you know, we should charge Jochen for the grass. And on the opposite end of the spectrum, there's people telling me that I should get a tractor and I should be the one that's baling the grass. But the reality is, is that this is a, a symbiotic relationship. It's something that works for both of us. Both of us are super happy. I don't know if you can tell, but Joaquin loves being in these videos. He loves showing this way of life to people. 
um, and he loves showing how proud he is of his farm, of his tractor, of his sheep and everything else. So, you know, it's a really great relationship that, that we have and uh, I'm not going to change that for anything. Now there's lots of different tasks that happen on the farm. Obviously, um, you know, collecting olives once a year and also doing the baling of the grass. Those kind of things only happen once a year. Um, then we've got the corn, so that's another time of year. Uh, but the rest of the stuff, there's lots and lots of maintenance jobs. So all around our farmhouse in the background, uh, we keep about probably two to three acres um, of grass that's all cut and all neat and everything like that. So that we've got pretty much a garden around the house. It also stops things like ticks from getting close to the house. And uh, it, it's also much safer for fires. So that is a big job that happens in spring uh, every single week. I'm cutting like two to three acres of grass. And uh, yeah, I can't believe it. I've been doing it with one little lawnmower for like the last four years and that thing hasn't fallen apart yet. So that's pretty amazing. Um, there's obviously also other things that you do in regular houses like painting and DIY and stuff like that. But yeah, I'm glad that I don't have to look after all of these big fields because I wouldn't actually have a use for all of this grass. Oh, and actually, before I forget, we've also got um, vineyards. So we've got grapes. The majority of them are red grapes. I'm not sure of the exact variety, uh, but once a year, we obviously harvest the grapes and uh, we give those to Joaquin. I'm not really a wine person. As you can probably tell from my videos, I drink lots of beer and uh, I don't know. I've never really been that much into wine. I find it gives me like terrible hangovers and stuff, probably because I drink too much of it. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so we give all of the grapes to Joaquin. He's got all the equipment and we get together once a year. We pick the grapes with them. We bring them over to his place and uh, he's got all of the equipment to make wine at his house. And uh, so if you haven't seen those, have a look through our playlists. It's usually towards the end of the year. I'm not sure, like August, September time. Um, so yeah, so have a look through our playlists. We've got some really cool videos where we've made wine, where we've made aguadente and done all sorts of stuff. So make sure you check those out. Yeah, we can see that it's getting a lot finer now. And he needs to have this fine substrate because he's going to be putting a whole bunch of corn kernels into the ground and those are going to be growing. So the ground need, needs to be soft so that when those corn kernels go down, they're buried with earth and uh, they can start growing. And if you are new to this channel and you haven't seen it before, this corn grows in 40 degree heat with absolutely no irrigation. I mean, it's, it's an absolute wonder. I can't believe it. Um, we aren't growing it to, you know, to produce corn, as I said. So it only grows like the green stalks. The only time that you can actually grow the corn is if you irrigate. And that's something that we won't be doing. We don't actually need the corn cobs. Um, there is a small section that Joaquin will irrigate and that is going to be used so that they can get the seeds to use for the next year. Now, I just want to show you quickly what Joaquin's vineyard looks like. You've seen what ours looks like in the background. And look how cool this one looks. So he's plowed in between, or well, not plowed, sorry, tilled. It's a very light till. And that basically keeps the weeds down. And then he's got them all on uh, wires here so that they're growing properly. They were all pruned a while back and now you can start to see all of the green growth coming through. And these are going to get way more grapes than our vineyard. You know, as I said, I'm not um, really growing grapes for wine because I don't really drink wine. So I'm not really sure what the variety of these grapes are either. There's like a mixture of like white and red and all sorts of different things. So um, yeah, at some stage, at some stage, I'd like to do that to our vineyard and, uh, you know, maybe give it a go. Maybe I'll develop a taste for, for wine, who knows. Termino. Termino. Wow, okay. So yeah, in the time that I was walking around in here, he's already done all of it with his trusty tractor and it's all turned into a nice powder and yeah, ready for planting. Obrigado, Joaquin. <laughs> Turo. Ciao. Now, excuse all the bumps. I'm just taking my bike down to our main well. And uh, the reason I'm going down here is because I just want to show you how our water works on our farm. Summer's coming, it's going to be mega dry and uh, it's important that we don't waste all of our water resources. So this over here is a well. We've got two of them on our land and we've got a pump in here. But basically, uh, as you can see, a pretty strong one. And we've got a pipe that goes underneath the ground and it goes all the way up to our house, which is over here. And that basically supplies the water to our house. Now we basically don't even realize that we have a well. It's just like having a main supply in your house where there is a pump that basically turns on it fills up this pressure balloon um, so I think the pressure balloon's got about 300 liters in it 
And then when we're running water in the house, if we're having a shower or whatever for like, you know, five, 10 minutes, that pressure balloon basically drops to a certain level and then this pump kicks back on again. So there's never like a delay. There's never like a drop in pressure or anything. It just feels like regular house water. But because this well is, as you can see, you know, it's not very sanitary. Um, there's spiders, spider webs. Uh, I'm not sure if you can see the water levels. Look at the reflection. So, wow, it's actually really high. I was expecting the water levels to be quite low. But yeah, because of that, um, you know, we can't really keep this water sanitary for drinking purposes. You know, for bathing, it's fine. So we shower in it, we, you know, wash dishes in it. We do all sorts of stuff, but we don't drink it. So we're not, you know, pouring a glass of that because there's definitely going to be some kind of bacteria and things like that in there. It is very clean. It is very clear. There's no sediment or anything like that. It's, you know, completely crystal clear. Um, and I've heard that actually the people that used to live in this house used to drink this water. So, you know, I'm sure it's probably fine, but you know, we um, rather collect water from a spring, you know, for our drinking water and stuff like that. All right, let's go to the other well and have a look. So one of our wells is supplying the house. It's nice, clean water. Um, the other well is open. It's open to the elements and uh, we got fish and frogs and all sorts of stuff living in there. And that's an irrigation well. Now I'm using the bike because it's all the way on the front of the farm. And actually today I had to do some work on that well to try and see if I could get it to work and I was walking up and down, up and down, up and down, and I've only just realized that I could have just hopped on this bike and cruised around and saved myself a lot of trouble. I think I went up and down about 10 times, so yeah, next time take the bike, dude. <laughs> This is such a cool thing. I was given this by this company called Engui, and uh, there is actually a video that I made uh, two weeks ago that basically shows this bike. I went all over the place on it, but I absolutely love it. And um, Engui have given me an affiliates link. So if you want to buy one of these things, there's a link that you can click on. There is a discount on the website. And uh, yeah, we also get a little kickback. If you buy the bike, we get a couple of percent as commission. And believe me, it's a hell of a lot of fun to cruise around on that little thing. It's basically like a bicycle. It's got pedals and it's also got an electric motor. Um, but yeah, it, it definitely saves a lot of work. If you have to cruise up and down a farm, it does off-roading and stuff really well too. All right, so this is our agricultural well. We've got this over here, which is the pump house. And this is the well. I'm not sure if you're going to be able to see now, um, but there's like a lot of frogs. Because we've got all this duckweed, I don't know if you can see the frogs, but there's a couple dotted around the place. So over here we have a black pipe and that basically goes into the pump house. Now we want to be able to like irrigate parts of our farm and we don't want to use that main house well because um, you know it's going to be a very dry summer. There's definitely going to be a bit of a drought and the last thing we want to do is run out of water. So it's good to kind of balance those out between the dam and the two wells. Oh. I'm going to need two hands. I'm going to have to put the camera down for a sec. All right. So this is what we got here. This is a, um, like a, a surface pump. So it's a well pump, but it sits above the water. It doesn't sit in the water. One of the benefits of these is that because it's not in the water, it's not rusting. It's not sitting there rusting. Um, this is the motor. It's got a little fan on this side that blows over the motor and keeps it cool. And then the motor attaches to this, which is a water pump. And that's where the black pipe comes in. And then we have this, um, this pipe over here that goes into this. This is a pressure vessel or a, or a water balloon. And it's got some kind of a, a bag inside that has air. And as the water fills up, it squeezes that air. And then that gives you a pressure reading, which you can see on the gauge. Now, when it gets to, as you can see here, about 50, 50, uh, not 50 bar. Is that 50 bar? Yeah, I think it is. I don't know wait, that's three bar or it's, I'm not sure exactly what it's measuring in. But when it gets to about 50, the pump switches off, so it doesn't pump anymore. And we have lots of pressure inside this tank. It's definitely not 50 bar. It's gonna be like three point something bar. Um, and then what that means is when you open up a tap, you've got tons of pressure. So all of this is under pressure. As you open up a tap somewhere, the pipes are charged and all of the water flows out. When the pressure drops a little bit, the pump kicks back on again and keeps the pressure up. So when um, I had to turn this thing on for like the first time in a couple of years, the pipe that basically goes into the well has absolutely no water in it. And so you've got this pump running, but there's no water. It doesn't have any, you know, well, it doesn't have water inside, so it can't suck anything. It's just basically pulling air. Um, so I had to prime it and um, 
I did that by pouring water into the top here and then it took ages, it took a long time. I couldn't get it to work properly and it was really frustrating. Now, unfortunately I didn't do it on camera because it would have been pretty cool, but this black pipe, I lifted it out the water. I wanted to see if the end was clogged and that was what was maybe making the water pressure not go so well. Now on the end of it, it had a no return valve and the no return valve was made in metal. The reason you need that is because every time the pump's off, all of the water would just drain all the way back in and you'd have an empty pipe that has to be primed every time it turns on. So there's this no return valve that's been sitting in the water for at least four years that we've owned the farm and I found that it was blocked. Well, it wasn't really blocked. I mean, um, blocked is the wrong word. The actual mechanism had seized. So I basically had to kind of lubricate it and press it in and out a few times. And then we switched the pump back on and it's working. So now we aren't using our house well to irrigate anymore, which means that I'm gonna be able to use sprinklers and instead of having a really dry, dusty farm all around the farmhouse, I'm gonna be able to put sprinklers around and hopefully get a nice green lawn going all the way around the house in summer. But that's gonna be amazing. So let me just show you how all of this works. Um, we've got these taps over here. So this bar basically comes from that well all the way down there. And as you can see, we got water, lots and lots of water. I am super happy about this because in the summer for the last four years, when it gets to like 40 degrees, the water levels start to drop and you start to get really nervous. Like, oh, what if we run out of water? You know, obviously you want to have friends and family around. You want to put water inside the pool and um, you want to keep all of your grass and your veggies watered. And so now um, hopefully that's going to alleviate a lot of that worry. If we're not going to be doing that on that main well down there, and we're going to be getting all that water from this well up here. It should definitely, definitely last us even through a heavy drought like what we had last year and possibly even worse. So the plumbing is pretty cool. So we've got this pipe over here. Right now, um, the water is being taken from that well. And I'll show you over here. Um, they've got this over here. Hello, Goosey Goose. Goosey Goose Goose. I don't know if you haven't seen Goosey Goose in a while. Look how big he's getting. He's getting feathers. Um, but over here we have a lever, so there's basically a pipe. Um, the pipe going in that direction comes from our house well, and then the pipe going in the other direction comes from um, the irrigation well. And if you turn this lever, you can basically select which well you want to select. And so even if one of the wells runs dry, we're still going to have water in the house because we can select between the two. Obviously we don't want that well, you know, the agricultural well, it's got fish in there and frogs in there, it's probably got some sediment. Uh, but uh, yeah, you know, emergency cases, we've got two wells to choose from. And now that we've got these sweet little geesey geese, now we can make sure that they've got green grass to eat in the summertime. Because they just munch continuously. I actually really wish that I'd filmed it. You know, sometimes, well, not sometimes, if you try and do a basic task, it takes a certain amount of time. But if you try and film it and put a camera somewhere, and it takes a lot longer, sometimes about 10 times as long. And you know, sometimes when you don't think that something's gonna work, like I honestly thought that that pump was broken, I didn't bother filming it. And I really wish that I had because it was uh, quite epic once that water finally came out. I was already on like the internet looking at other pumps and to replace that one over there is about 350 euros. So I'm so glad I managed to get it working. Yeah, this is definitely a much better way of getting around the farm than uh, walking up and down the fields the whole day long. <laughs> it's so awesome. The only thing I will say is I need to get these brakes changed for some hydraulic, well, brakes, because these squeaky brakes really do my head in. And let's park up in the barn.